anything to co- report there. We don't have anything to report on our contract negotiation. We have to be prepared uh, to be trite. We have to be prepared to uh, uh, play without any given player. Uh, we may very well play without a player that uh, uh, is uh, uh, not coming in on his contract. So, listen, uh, we've got a marathon here, and we won't Zeke when we get to the playoffs. We won't Zeke when we're uh, in the uh, uh, dog days of this season. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to First Take, coming to you live from the Seaport District at Pier 17, brought to you by Chase. Big Jerry speaking this morning in Dallas with the latest on the Zeke standoff, saying the start of the regular season is not the deadline to get a deal done. Max Kell, who's got the upper hand now, Zeke or Cowboys? It's actually Ezekiel Elliott. And it doesn't mean he has unlimited leverage here. He won't be a free agent next year. He can't do what Le'Veon Bell did and become a free agent and all that stuff. But the Cowboys have Super Bowl aspirations, and they're about to pay their quarterback. And what do we all know? The quarterback on the rookie deal, since quarterbacks are clearly overpaid, the quarterback on the rookie deal is that's the window you have to build a team around them. They're about to lose that window. But they got everything they need except maybe the coach right now. They got an offensive line. They got a defense. <laughs> they got a quarterback. They got a running back. They got a lead wide out. They got everything but the coach. <laughs> no. I'm sorry to laugh in the middle of your soliloquy. Hey, everything with the coach. They've made the playoffs with this, this coach. Is, I mean, this is football, Matt. The, the point not is, basketball. The point is they are <laughs> loaded, and the time <laughs> is now. Now, when Jerry Jones says, hey, it's a marathon, we want him healthy for the playoffs, that makes it sound like he's really digging Zeke, like, hey, you, you, you know. Yeah. But, in fact, that tips his hand a little bit. Because what it tells me is if Ezekiel Elliott is willing to follow through and sit out and miss those game checks, which are not insignificant, he has a big rookie deal, he's drafted fourth. If he's willing to do that, right, right, right. The Cowboys will fold. Stephen A., look at their schedule. You, you've pointed to this. Molly, you've pointed to this. i got schedule right in front of me. That's yeah, why I opened my you, book. I'm looking you, at the schedule. You've pointed to this to, to point out why Zeke, this could backfire on him because they start with the Giants at Dallas, and then they go to Washington. These are not really strong teams. However, they're mm-hmm. NFL East rivals, and in fact, it puts a lot of pressure on the Cowboys to win. Much stranger things have happened than a bad Giants team going to Dallas and beating them at Dallas. But week four, it gets kind of real. We'll yeah, but I'm saying, like, actually – the Cowboys aren't even good enough to split those first two games. What if they lose those first two games without Ezekiel? Le- Everyone's like, well, if they win, his leverage goes. But what if they lose? They're just about as likely to lose to lose as they are to win without Ezekiel Elliott. Those games, NFL East rivals. By the way, that opening game, because they got to go on the road against Washington, that opening game against the Giants is actually a must-win game without Zeke if they want to win the contract negotiation. In fact, at this moment, Ezekiel Elliott, they both have some leverage. I think Ezekiel Elliott has a little more if he's willing to miss game checks. <sighs> Question is, who has the upper hand? It would happen to be the Dallas Cowboys. Here's why. When you look at the Dallas Cowboys, it's Ezekiel Elliott that has two years left on his deal. It's Ezekiel Elliott that can be franchised for a third year. It's Ezekiel Elliott that decided to make this move in the middle in the middle of their negotiations with Dak Prescott. It's also the Dallas Cowboys schedule that they have available to them, the Giants, to open the gate. Uh, Washington with, with Case Keenum as their quarterback, if I remember correctly. And then you got Miami uh, that's got a new coach and possibly Ryan Fitzpatrick or Josh Rose, uh, Josh Rose, whoever the hell they have, okay? So you got this going on. So really, uh, September 29th, every game for the Dallas Cowboys without Ezekiel Elliott is absolutely positively winnable before New Orleans on September 29th. Mm -hmm. Then we take into account this. You also got to remember that if you're the Dallas Cowboys, although you got Jason Garrett as your coach, which is an impediment to your success, I would argue, you got a first-year offensive coordinator in Kellen Moore. He's a pass-happy kind of guy. He seems to be – he's purportedly the kind of guy that wants to air it out. We're trying to find out about, about Dak. And so if you are Jerry Jones and you really, really want to find out what Dak is made of, okay, I could make the argument that the deal hasn't been reached yet for that reason. Not that I think it will happen. I think ultimately you'll take care of your quarterback. But one could make the argument that that might have something to do with the procrastination that appears to, that appears to exist on a part of him and Dak. Because without Ezekiel Elliott, I want to see what you got. 
So, in other words, what I'm saying is time is on the Cowboys. I might not be on Jerry Jones' side, who's turned to 76 this year, but time is on the Cowboys' side. Ding, ding, I ding. I understand. I understand, but he knows that too, Max, and he's willing to take that chance. He's willing to take that chance. So, if you are Ezekiel Elliott, here's the, here's the risk, and I'll just throw this out to you, and then I'll give it to you. What if Dak goes out there with Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator? And he's airing it out 35, 40 times a game. And he looks big time as a passer. And their passing attack is formidable. Obviously, Ezekiel Elliott would only buffer all of that stuff. But what I'm saying is, if you're winning without him, does that help him? Well, okay. Now we're saying that if there's new information that comes in, it'll give one or the other leverage. In other words, if they start the season 0-2 and, and Dak looks bad, then Ezekiel's then Zeke's leverage goes up. If they start the season 2-0 and and Dak looks great, then Zeke's leverage goes down. The Cowboys' leverage goes up. We're talking about right now. What is it? What? Right now, the Cowboys are in a position to win the Super Bowl. You cannot say that about the Cowboys. You couldn't for years and years and years, and they haven't done it in almost a quarter century, and Jerry Jones is not a spring chicken. But I don't know how we can separate now from the first two or three weeks of the season. I don't know how we can Depending do that. Depending on what that information Because what is. I'm saying to you is that going into – there's no urgency – until there's urgency. There's no urgency while the games are not being played. So, in any, if anything, my argument is buffered because since no games have been played, what is Jerry Jones pressed about? What's he pressed about? If no games have been played, you ain't lose none because either. All these if games you start matter. out, if you, if, oh, wait a minute, they haven't played yet. And if they start out, like you said, if they start out 2 0, the leverage elevates, right? Well, they, the leverage is 0 0. The leverage if is there. If you take Ezekiel Elliott off right. the Cowboys, they go from a top five tennis kind of team mm -hmm. in the NFL mm -hmm. to something below okay. that. The expectations mm -hmm. for the team okay. drastically let me, change. Let me just throw the, just, just, uh, okay, fine. Let me just throw out another scenario to you. Let's say for the sake of argument, I don't think this is going to happen because damn it, it's the Cowboys and their fans would be happy about this and we know how much that would grate my nerves. But here's the deal. Let's say, for example, the Cowboys start off at 3-0. and And they said, all right, let's, let, let, let's see what they, we, we want to go into New Orleans without Zeke. Let's see what Dak does then against Drew Brees at the Superdome, at the Mercedes-Benz Dome. Let's see what happens at that particular moment in time. What if they have that kind of mentality and then they, lo and behold, a miracle happens and the Dallas Cowboys start off 4 and up. What if there's a bunch of new information and all the events favor the Cowboys? What if, but, but, if that is the case, but, then the Cowboys' leverage will go up and Zeke's will go down? But, okay. We're not talking about that right now. I understand now. that. But what I'm saying to you is if you want to eradicate the new information and just deal with this moment this moment yeah. no games have been played what am i pressed for i don't need you i ain't losing because games i ain't winning games the because last I'm, not, I'm not pressed right and we what happened like, with the Le'Veon and i'm glad you brought yeah. Le'Veon up and by the way i know it's totally different, different situation could, totally could different could situation sit out the you know, season and then become a free agent that's right and ezekiel yeah. elliott can't do that exactly. on the other hand but kind because, of similar i was shocked that he held out because levy i was not because Le'Veon was a second round pick don't forget ezekiel elliott signed a 16 million dollar contract when he turned pro. He's made millions already that Le'Veon didn't make. Yeah. So he has, you presumably, a little more, as you would say, buffer, a little more cushion in order to pull this off. But they are loaded to do it now, not later, right now. And if you take Ezekiel Elliott off the team, that's why I say it totally comes down to what is he willing to do? If you take him off the team, the expectations for the Cowboys totally reset that is leverage for Z. It doesn't mean he's going to be the top paid guy in the league, but it means that his guarantees should be somewhere among the top running back guarantees. I think that Ezekiel Elliott is worthy of being the top paid running back in football, if not at the least at number two. I'm not questioning whether or not he deserves his money. What I'm saying is, based on your behavioral issues, who are you to press Jerry Jones at this particular moment in time when he's negotiating with Dak? And if you're going to do that, understand that even though it's perfectly within your right to do it and your on-field exploits justify it, you ain't exactly in a strong position of leverage when if you, no games are when, being lost. When you, the argument, if no games are being lost. The argument that, well, the running back position is not as important is silly I'm in not this saying, case. I didn't say because that. Because this team dre broke with precedent but right, I didn't in recent say that. years. I understand. Okay, I'm saying okay, from right, Jerry right, Jones' right, point right, of okay. view. You know, usually right. got Gurley was hurt, so he went ninth or tenth, ninth. But usually, mm -hmm. you don't take a running back in the top five true. before Ezekiel Elliott. That's true. 
Once you do that, you're saying we believe he's actually worth that. So when that guy perf performs to that level or even maybe overperforms and he wants to get paid, right. you pay. if it's DN, and, they and pay that, him. And that's your argument. My retort would be quickly, Dak Prescott wasn't even getting paid a million, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. See, getting over $6 million. Yep. So I got a quarterback that's never missed a game, that's been a model citizen, that's played all 48 games, started all 48 games, went to two Bro Bowls, yeah. delivered me two division titles, plus he plays the most important position. And he's why he's going to get $50 he's not, million plus he's not, even, he's not even getting paid a million yet. And you getting six million a year. Am I gonna prioritize that? You're damn right. It's all guaranteed. And he's got two years left on his deal. Let's right. keep that in mind. All right, guys. Max sure loves him some Odell Beckham Jr. But where does Stephen A. rank him amongst the game's best receivers? Stephen's A list is coming up next. It's been a while since we've had one of those. Novak Djokovic getting set on the bands there. The U.S. Open. You know it continues today at noon Eastern. Right after us, you can watch every match live on the app. We'll be there Friday. First take live from.